about each other and as long as we are killing one another he don't have that job to do so in 1968 65 Malcolm is gone in 1968 Martin is gone now when Malcolm and Martin are gone watch what happened now brother Gil Noble I used to be on his show when he was at LIB and when he moved to ABC television he had a beautiful show I used to be on Tony Brown's show but it used to be called Black Journal we used to turn on our TV and see black news uh, come on black news everything had black in it you go to Baltimore there was the black star program you go to California it was black it was black it was black it was black, it was black. that language united us no matter where we were on the earth if we were black we were family if we were black we were brothers and the enemy couldn't take that he had to find a way to destroy that so when Martin Luther King was killed a hundred cities were set on fire and the United States government said who led this these niggas they done got so militant now the Negro Improvement Association <laughs> that improved to the point where they militant. Some of them niggas got guns. Some of them niggas got Molotov cocktails. They burning down our cities. So the federal government went to look for the leader. And he found out that it really wasn't a leader that organized that. But blacks had become a national community with shared attitudes toward white people and a system of beliefs about this government, about police, about white supremacy, about Jim Crow. And we were all on the same page no matter what church or mosque we belonged to. And he said, now nah, we got to destroy this. How are you going to do it? He said, first thing we got to do is see that it's this television that was broadcasting what we were doing to them niggas. It's the television that gave them similar attitudes toward us. It's not the leader, it's the television. When we hit a nigga in Alabama, them Negroes in New York was looking at it. So them people are getting to the point where they feel each other's pain now. So they're reacting. When, when we kill Martin, this cracker's talking, them niggas jumped up in all them cities, even though they didn't follow Martin King, they burned the cities down. So he said, first thing we do we got to get rid of these television shows with this black stuff in front of it. So Black Journal became Tony's journal. Now you took it away from a universal concept and you made it personal. See? Shift in language. And as they shifted television programs away from blackness, they changed the language of our expression. They said, now, <clears throat> during the time of blackness, we saw blacks in the world as the majority population. We outnumber white people 11 to 1. They cannot have us thinking that we are the majority and they are the minority. So when the language changed, we started referring to ourselves again. Uh, now, new language, the minorities. Then another language change, the disadvantaged. See? And as they changed language, it started conceptually in our minds to make a shift away from each other as black brothers and sisters. And then the final nail in that coffin was, you are now an African 
American. So that African American thing took you away from your black brother in Jamaica because he's not American. He's Jamaican. All of a sudden now there was a disconnect started happening between us and the Caribbean, us and Central America, us and South America, us and Australia, New Zealand, us and Africa. But it was very subtle. You would have on the booba, you would, you would have on your, your um, African clothes, but you were not as committed to Africa. So the language change dropped us down now into another kind of groupings. Then when the Berlin Wall fell, they sent CIA operatives that used to operate in Eastern Europe to work among the gangs. Now you gotta ask yourself, what is a CIA operative doing working among gangs that was to promote gang life? Since you were growing into this need for unity and unified expression, the home began to lose its force for love because now in the new economy, Mama couldn't stay home and cook anymore. So, um, what's this woman that cooks? Sarah Lee and all of them now start cooking for you because you had to work. You didn't have no time to cook and we could come home and smell the, the biscuits in the oven. We could smell the food down the street. And when we came, we had to sit down at a table together and eat together. But now mama had to work. And, and when mama working, daddy working, or daddy not working, then who's watching the children? Then you begin to warehouse your children into these little um, daycare centers where people now manipulating your babies and playing with your daughters and fiddling with your sons and people that don't love your children now getting money from you to take care of your children so you can work for the enemy. See, now your home dropping. The man now being destroyed because he ain't bringing in enough money. Closing down factories and moving factories into the suburbs and into cheap labor markets. So the black man that want to work can't work. So he opens up two avenues, army or crime. Then drugs start coming in. Then guns start coming in. Then this one is a blood, that one is a crip. This one is a black gangster disciple. This one is an L Rookin. Then they put us at each other. Then the Baptists become a tribe. And they split into different groups. The Methodists become tribes. The Muslims become tribes. And now all of us are in a tribal mode. And all of us glorying in our own part. But not loving each other enough to want to unite to stop the evil that is happening to us all over the world. And it started with a shift in language. And depriving us of our black brothers and sister communicators on television and radio giving us a sense of direction. LIB ain't what it used to be. LIB was premier talk radio. You remember when I first went on LIB? The brother that had me on this show, he would play my whole speech. And he would put music behind my speech. Dell Shields. And when the, you would hear Farrakhan talking, you would hear a groove up under the word. Man. And, and the people were listening to the groove and eating the word, man. And Farrakhan became so strong in New York that even though we didn't vote, 
I could call for every black politician in this city and they would show up in my office because they needed votes and the people were with Farrakhan. Let me tell you something. Hold on a minute. I don't need no applause. I need, I need you to just be quiet and listen. When the enemy attacked the mosque in 1972, I said, I want all white police out of Harlem. And that night, there wasn't a white policeman nowhere in Harlem. Elijah Muhammad sent for me. He said, brother, don't speak ahead of your power to do. He said, 35% of the city of New York is with you. 15% is sympathetic, but you got another 50% that are against you. He said, you go back to New York, take the 15% that are sympathetic and make them like the 35% of New York that's with you, then reach over into the 50% that's against you till you get 25% of them sympathetic with you and any order that you give will be carried out. Now, I came back here to New York. This is the truth, man. Police commissioner came up in my office and I told him, look here, man, I'll bathe this city in blood. He said, Farrakhan, you would do that? I said, yes, sir. Now, they knew they were dealing with a crazy man. But let me tell you something. Crazy men in this world get respect. And I think that's why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad sent for me to, to, to give me a little hell doll or something to kind of numb me down a little bit so I could get back sane. But anyway, I'm saying all of that to say this, that as I, as the nation fell and I went to Chicago, and you know, we started rebuilding the nation of Islam from Chicago, now God has given the minister a national voice. Yes. So the same way the people responded to me in New York, they now respond to me all over the country like that. And really, you may not know this, but they respond to me like this all over the world. When I have gone to Africa, my brother witness, they line the streets cheering me when I come in. This is the truth. They come to the airport and dance and they do things. I mean, in Russia, they did this. In Dagestan, in Siberia, in China. They well, well now, now, how did you get this way? Because Jewish people said I was anti-Semitic. And they know Negroes, whenever they pull out their guns in the media that they control, and they start beating you down, all of a sudden, the Negroes start whimpering, and then you don't hear about him no more. But the more they beat on Farrakhan, the more Farrakhan fought back. See, so when I came to Madison Square Garden in 85, you couldn't get near Madison Square Garden. It was the hottest ticket in New York. Now, when, when they left that night, the press said Farrakhan has become uh, the, um, what kind of leader did they say? The premier leader. The premier leader among black people. Now, in 1995, from 93 to 95, the minister going all over the country talking to black men. We called a Million Man March and 1.8 million black men showed up. Now the people didn't understand what I did after that. Say the minister, in, he, he squandered the goodwill and went to Africa with the thugs of Libya and Saddam Hussein and all these people. I did meet with all of them, all right. But I met with a whole lot of others 
that were not thugs or rogues. I went down to South Africa and Nelson Mandela, even though our plane were hours late, Nelson Mandela waited for me. And the Jewish deputies wanted him to meet me in his office. He said, no, I will meet Farrakhan in my house. And when I went to South Africa, I sat down with Nelson Mandela. We talked, we got along. When we came out, the press said, well, this man so and so and so and so. And he said, well, I didn't find nothing like that. So you don't, you don't read that in the paper. When I was in Mecca, None of this you know. Come on, wait, wait. But the scholars in Mecca, on, I, I demanded a meeting with them. And in Mecca, they sat me down for three days and we argued over Islam. Now, most of you, when you go there with a scholar, you bow down. But Elijah Muhammad didn't make me no faggot to bow down to nothing in this world. They wasn't used to a black man from America having a point of view that was different from theirs. And, and when they started talking to me, I started taking notes. The scholar was a Yemeni scholar named Zendani. Brilliant black um, uh, uh, Arab brother. But when he finished talking to me on his scholarship, I took everything that he said and took it to a deeper level and the man couldn't sleep at night. He came back the next day with more. And we did the same thing again. I slept every night. He was up all night trying to figure out how to deal with Farrakhan. And on the third day, he started questioning me about Master Farad Muhammad. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And when he laid his stuff down, I went right in the Quran and laid my stuff down. And at the end of it, there was a wise scholar sitting in the back who wasn't saying nothing. His name was Muhammad Qutb from Egypt. And when Zendani deferred to him and asked him, did he have anything to say? These are his words. He said, I came to listen and I came to learn. And I have both listened and learned. And then we went to Asa prayer and we agreed to disagree. But we were respectful. Now, now, Negroes don't come out of Mecca. I mean, out of America, talking to the scholars of Mecca like that. The man told me, he said, Farrakhan, when you're sick, you go to see a doctor. And when you're ignorant, you look for the scholars. So I said, are you the scholars? Will you arrogate to yourself scholarship with the Muslim world in the condition that it is in? I kicked his butt. Now, let me, let me see. Now, I'm telling you something about being a punk and a faggot when you get in front of power. God damn it, if you know God, then stand up like a man and face the world. So when I left, when I left Mecca, I left with my dignity. When the Mayor Man March took place, Gaddafi found me on the telephone. I wasn't seeking him. He found me. I couldn't believe it was he on the telephone because he was speaking English. <laughs> I 
And he said, Farrakhan, he said, I want you to come to Libya. I will back you with a billion dollars. I will back you. Because I told him when I was there, when his people wanted me to be in America doing some revolutionary stupidity. I told him I am a revolutionary. But I'm not that kind. My revolution, I'll create it with the scriptures of the Bible and the Holy Quran. I don't need a gun. And when I left them in Libya, Gaddafi told his people, leave Farrakhan alone. He know what he want to do. I went over there. This is my witness. I whipped the hell out of them for slavery. In their face. Yes, sir. Yes, See, sir. don't invite me, man, thinking you're inviting some punk to the party. No, no, no. I was in Iraq and condemned what Saddam Hussein had done in the war with Iran. I'm in this country. Don't give a damn where I am. God is where I am. And God is where you are if you really believe. So now, when I went to Africa and the Middle East and Asia, I wanted to tie our struggle to the struggle of our people all over the world because the whole world saw you in Washington and the whole world was moved yes. by nearly two million black men ranging in ranks go ahead, go ahead. like a solid wall. Go ahead. And when they saw you, they said there's hope for us because if those black men became a spiritual, moral, and political force, they can change the policies of a government that has militated against our rise. Mm. That's why I went eastward yes, sir. to tie our struggle yes, sir. Yes, sir. to the struggle of our people everywhere. And my brother's a witness, every door flung open That's on right. the hinges. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Farcon is here. Yes, sir. Oh, bring, bring him in right away, right away. Yes, sir. They would send to the airport and have me with a police yes, that's right. escort, yes, escort. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. taking me through the streets with sirens and motorcycles yes, sir. Yes, sir. and guns. That's right. When I was in Iran, yes, they had the Iran Secret Service hmm. in, the, in the compound. They gave me a big home right, right. to live in. Yeah. And when I moved, the army moved That's right. with That's me. Right. When I went to the holy city of Qum, yes, sir. they spoke to the believers where they train imams. When I finished, they broke ranks just to touch me. And the gods got afraid because they just wanted to touch me, but windows were breaking out. Right, right, right. Yes, in Ethiopia, it Come was on. the same. Man, yes. In mm. the Sudan, yes, it yes, was sir. the same. Yes, sir. In South Africa, it was the same. Yes, ha, ha. In Ghana, it was the same. I don't talk about these things, but we have film on all of this yes, that sir. maybe one day you will see. Yes, sir. That's right. Stand up. The whole world is waiting with bated breath for your rise. Do you think it's an accident that you were placed in America? And America has become the ruler of the world and the only remaining superpower. And there's 40 to 50 million of us in her midst. Don't you know you the rudder mm. that can turn this go big ahead. ship around? Go ahead, go ahead. All you need is leadership that have testicles. Ooh. 
all you need is leadership that will not sell you out. I didn't, I didn't mean to get so excited. I really been, I really been doing a lot of talking over these last few days, and my voice is a little tired, but my spirit is is on fire because I see the suffering of our people worldwide. And the hope of the world is what goes on in America. You rise. We rise. And black people all over the earth will stand and cheer because your rise in the house of the world ruler. And it's already written that the slave that was sold into slavery by his own brothers became a ruler in the house where he was sold as a slave. That's your destiny, black man. And that's why the white man is giving you his woman. That's why the white man is keeping you with drugs. That's why the white man is absolutely destroying your health and your well-being so that you will never fulfill the destiny of ruling in his house. So I know my next meeting is, is here, but let me close with this. They don't want us to rule, but check out white homes today. See who's on their wall. They got pictures of Muhammad Ali on the wall. They got pictures of Michael Jordan on the wall. They got pictures of Michael Vick on the wall. They got pictures of Barry Sanders on the wall. Yes, sir. They got pictures of Michael Jackson on the wall. Come on. Mm -hmm. On the wall of respect in white folks' houses are black people. They got Michael Johnson, the great track star. They got us on their wall. And this is why they got that show on TV. Um, that one that makes or uh, causes people who are stars America. to come on TV America. and talk. No, no, America, no, no, come on. No, no, stop it. Now, if you listen to me, you may, you may help me. It's a show where they put black athletes on the television show to talk about their lives, their ups, and mainly their down. Beyond the globe. Thank you. And why you think they're putting it on? Because the magnetic attraction of black sports and entertainment figures is capturing their children. And they want to show their children this is the Negro. The nigger don't follow him. It's too late, Whitey. It's too late. Snoop Dogg and white girls gone wild. <laughs> Here's white rappers now. Got locks, dreadlocks, all these kind of. Got their pants hanging off their behinds now. And they rapping with us. And our rappers go, you see the white ones down in front. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the Senate of the United States, they're talking about it. And they said, we're losing our children right. to them niggas. Right. The Negro Improvement Association <laughs> has got our children. You're ruling the world and don't even know it. 
but you're ruling it with stupidity. With degenerate lyrics and degenerate behavior, but you're ruling. Now all we got to do is shift it and put the right idea in the rap. The right idea in the song. The right idea in the dance. And see with spiritual men and political men that are unafraid to take the helm of government.